Hello students, this is Mr. Martyrone, and today in our flip classroom, we're going to take a look at what feudalism is in the Middle Ages. So you should have out the graphic organizer that is entitled the Middle Ages, 500 to 1500 AD, so we're talking about a thousand year period of history. In class, we've looked at um, a little bit of the background, so we're going to start with this box right here entitled feudalism, so I'm going to give you a little notes, a few notes on that before we look at our feudal pyramid. So what actually is feudalism? Feudalism is a system of loyalties and protections. It is a type of government and economic system of the Middle Ages. After Charlemagne and Charles the Great, uh, after that empire that we talked about, the Holy Roman Empire broke apart, there was no central government that helped protect the people. Land became the main source of wealth, and Europe, that mighty Roman Empire that we had talked about, initially was broken into two. First it was the Roman Empire, then it was uh, the Byzantine Empire. The Roman Empire, the western half of that, breaks apart into thousands of tiny kingdoms or feudal towns. And we're going to take a look at what feudalism is, and we're going to examine what those small towns were like. So the manorial system. As I said previously, land was the main source of wealth. If you had access to land or own large quantities of land, then you were pretty wealthy. The manorial system is the relationship to the lord, or excuse me, the relationship of the lord to the peasant who worked on his land. And we're going to talk about that relationship in just a second. All right, feudalism. You want to take these notes on the chart that I have provided for you. Up at the top of the feudal pyramid, we have – undoubtedly, we've got our monarch, our king. Then we've got our nobles. Then we have our knights or lords. At the bottom, we have the peasants. Now, what's really unique about this is these relationships were stagnant, meaning many people didn't advance. Okay, So there wasn't going to be uh, nobles becoming kings and kings being um, – be thrown to become nobles, and knights weren't moving up to being nobles, and definitely peasants weren't moving up the social pyramid. Where you were born is where you stayed. So feudalism, the definition you want to write down, is a system of loyalties and protections. A system of loyalties and protections. And we're going to talk about that loyalty and protection right now. So the first part of our feudal pyramid – Serfs and peasants, so you have to understand the relationship, how feudalism works. At the bottom, we have serfs and peasants, and right above them, we have knights and vassals. So the serfs and peasants provide labor to the vassals or the knights. They work the land, they farm the land, and they give that service to the knights. And the knights, in turn, provide protection to the serfs and peasants. They don't let anything happen to them. All right? Easy enough. Then we have the nobles. So the serfs and the peasants provide labor to the knights. The knights provide protection to the serfs and the peasants. The peasants provide labor to the knights, and the knights provide loyalty and military service to the nobles. In exchange, the nobles provide land and protection to the knights. They give the knights a place to stay, a place to live. All right, and then finally we have our king or queen. So the serfs and peasants provide labor to the knights. The knights provide loyalty and military service to the nobles, and the nobles provide their loyalty and service to their king. The king in turn gives land to the nobles, and then the nobles give land and protection to the knights. And then the knights provide protection to the serfs and peasants. So my question to you guys is as you're looking at this chart, which direction – who has the most power? Is it the king providing the land to his subjects, or does power trickle down, or does it bubble up? Do the serfs have more power because they have provide the, the food and the labor? Do the knights have more power? Do the nobles, or does the king? That's really what we want to look at. So when we take a closer examination of feudalism in class next week, 
we will take a look at the social pyramid, the social struggle there. So again, really take a minute and observe this relationship as it exists, because we're going to play some, uh, spend some time with it. But again, consider the possibilities. Where does power come from? Does it come from the king who provides the land? Or does it really come from the bottom, from the serfs who provide the labor? So let me just recap one more time for those of you that still may struggle with the concepts of feudalism. The king has the land. He gives land to his nobles. The nobles then provide land and protection to the knights. The knights give protection to the serfs and the peasants who are at the bottom. The serfs and the peasants give their labor to the knights and the vassals. The knights and the vassals provide loyalty and military service to the nobles, and the nobles provide service to the king. And this was the predominant source of government uh, throughout Europe through uh, much of the Middle Ages and even into the early Renaissance. Feudalism will end in the, around the 1200s. It begins to kind of fade out, uh, and that is because the economy begins to change. So as money, as paper and coin money be, is introduced, people could pay off the serfs with coins and cash and currency rather than just giving them land. Also, changes in warfare uh, from the crossbow to the longbow to armor-piercing arrows changes feudalism, and the Crusades. During the, during the Dark Ages, during the medieval periods, people, the serfs, never left their feudal towns. There was no outside travel. So people in the Crusades became soldiers, and they left the feudal towns to venture out in the world. And when they come back, they come back with new knowledge uh, that really will reshape the world as we know it today, especially in Europe with regard to the Renaissance. So that, like always, is our brief introduction to feudalism. As I said, we'll talk about these concepts a little bit more in class with our feudal simulation. Uh, if you need to get any of the notes again or uh, re-watch the video, feel free to do so.